Good morning, this is Sabrina from Around the Way Garden. I'm out here early this morning on a Friday looking at the garden after it rained last night. I'm also looking for squash bugs and picking some fruit. So I'll bring you into my lemon squash here. Here I have couple of fruit. There's another one there. So I'm gonna pick these off. If you haven't heard about what I do with my squash to keep the squash vine borer from laying its eggs. I put aluminum foil around the base of the plants to keep it from laying at the base. And it seems to be helping. I found a couple of squash eggs. Um, the vine borer eggs on a fruit and um, that's all I haven't found any anywhere else yet this is tricky <laughs> let me see if I can get this sorry for the noise that's my air conditioning unit if I wait for it to cut off I'll never do a video. Ugh. So, vine is looking good. I'll probably cut some of these leaves up as it grows and keep wrapping. So I have my soapy water ready to knock any of those squash bugs out into it because I saw a couple the other day but I couldn't get them because I didn't have any gloves on and I didn't want to squish them with my bare hands. So here I have some tomato plants and um, some peppers. This one I'm growing in a um, a container that has recycled uh, soda bottles in it. So it's the wicking system. That's what it is. I couldn't think of what it's called, but it's the wicking system. And so I see a lot of flowers as well as peppers coming on. And then I have just others in pots. This one I got from, uh, I guess it was Lowe's. It's called a Lunchbox Red Sweet Snacking Pepper. So I got a bunch of peppers on here. Just waiting for them to turn red. So... Here's my bare root pear tree. It's putting out some leaves. Again, I have this one in a wicking system too, in a pot, but the wicking system. And finally, my um, bee balm has started to bloom. You see that one bee there? I don't know where my bees are at. But they're trying. He's trying. 
He's the only one that's been around lately. Now my neighbor has a bunch of bees with her bee bomb, but her bee bomb came out way earlier than mine. So here are my Georgia collards. I've cut these a couple of times. And you see from this rain, they sprung up more. I need to get out here and do some weeding. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's my next um, squash plant. It's a Caserta squash. Again, I have the foil wrapped around it. All the way to the base. I'm not playing with these boards these this year. They will get my plant every time. So, you know, I go along, look on the undersides of the leaves, looking for any eggs from the squash bugs, and looking for the eggs for the vine borer. This is my other zucchini, which is uh, the black, the black zucchini, I can't, oh, Ford Hook, I believe, is the name of it. This one, I have some, um, it might be diatomaceous earth on it, because it's so compact, it's hard to get the to get the foil around there. But I need to cut some of these leaves and then we won't have that problem. Here's my peach tree. A lot of, some of the peaches have fallen off of it. I'm not sure why. Again, I have this in that wicking tub system. Here's a tomato, tomato plant, and we've been having a whole lot of rain, you know. I'm up here in zone 7B, which is Virginia, and um, it's been raining like we, like we live in Florida. So, try to keep this um what you calling off of it plants and I'm good for putting out plants um and not labeling them I have them labeled when I start off but by the time I start putting stuff out here it's a wrap. I'm just trying to get it out. You know. Okay, now this is... I'm going to tell you. These are my raspberry plants. I bought one plant from Aldi. And they have replicated, duplicated, just took over my whole entire... Uh, my whole entire planting bed. I am just so over it. So, I don't know what to do except dig them out. But I have been getting raspberries if the squirrels don't get them. And then, like a dummy, I put a cucumber plant up here to the side of it out of a 
in a in a pot and they're growing but there's some little bugs on it or what those bugs are called you know, they look like ants Okay, so here's my patty pan, yellow squash. There, one there. So it's coming along good again. I have them wrapped in foil. I saw some squash bugs around here. Here's another cucumber. See, they're looking mighty yellow-ish. I think it's getting too much rain. But might need to put some of that 511 on there, that fish fertilizer. I know I will. Okay, so over here is my mulberry. Oh, let's see if I can get it to focus. Mulberry tree. It's huge. I would say it's only about three years old. Um, at the base, I put comfrey at it. And this comfrey has taken off. Uh, my neighbor has her gutter. And, you know, the pipe that you put on the, on the end of it. So I'm like, she had to have it replaced. So she got a longer pipe. And I was like, can I direct this pipe to my tree? Because... Mulberries seem to love water. So if you're having a problem growing your mulberry tree, give it some water. Like, <laughs> it loves wet feet. And it just like bushed out totally. Um, so here I have a hydroponic system called Krat, Krat, Krat's Key. K-R-A-T-K-Y where you just put your nutrients in there. There's no bubbler or anything. It's just a standing system. Put your plant down in there and let it grow. So I took a 55 gallon uh, barrel and put my master blend um, stuff in it, solution in there. And it has grown. It's taken off. It put out a whole lot of male flowers. As you can see. A whole lot of male flowers. I did see a female flower. Ah, uh, see, there they are. There are those squash bugs. I mean squash bugs. Right there. Making up a storm. I'm about to get them. Oh, there's a female right there. Let's see. Sorry for my camera work. I need one of my children to help me film. Because it's a sad case. Okay. Let's go get that soapy water. So I live on like three tenths of an acre. That includes the house. So I don't have a lot of land. And the backyard is like on a slope.
So hold on while I flick these things in the soap. I can't do it with one hand. Hold on. So here are my, well here are the squash bugs. Flicked them in this soapy water and voila, they're floating. Dead. Bottoms up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But I saw them the other day and you just put a squirt of your dish detergent in there, put a little bit of water in there and flick them right in there and they'll be dead so I know they were mating the other day so I'll have to look on the underside of these leaves you're looking for a reddish color group of eggs on the underside and when you see them, you can either just tear the, you know, the part of the leaf that has those eggs on it, or you can, I saw a trick where you could take scotch tape, put them on the eggs on the leaf, and then pull the tape off of it, and it will take the eggs off with it. So I've used that on the squash plants. I haven't actually used it on the cucumber. I just usually see the squash bugs mating on the cucumber. I rarely see the eggs. So now I'm gonna look at these uh, Kentucky Wonder pole beans because they are a wonder to me. They are growing up. I haven't seen many flowers. I didn't fertilize it. I didn't think so. All I put was the um, horse manure down. And that was about it. So we're going around here. I have a compost system here. It's one of those geo bins. i just been putting... Um, grass in there right now so just let it, I'm just letting it do its passive thing this this time and so it's breaking down I also have one of these tumblers I haven't used it in a couple of years because that's just work that I'm not invested in doing. <laughs> um, this is a hot mess bed here. I got uh, gooseberries in here. This one's not doing good. I need to get him out. He might not make it. There was another one. I lost these gooseberries. I'm going to be hot. Here's one here. I need to transplant them because there's not enough sun back here. This tree is. Uh, this tree is blocking a lot of sun. So I need to get them out of here. The tomatoes will do something, but not enough. This is a bed I clean, but you see it's taken over by. Weeds. So here's my Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans. Okay. They've grown up. And didn't put out any flowers. Well, here's one. So I saw on one guy's video, I don't even know who, who it was. He said, pinch the growing tips on these, the growing tips of your beans, and that'll force them to flower. So I have gotten some flowering now, 
I, I didn't I didn't do every tip but uh, I you know because I wanted to do an experiment <laughs> you know you don't do it all you do some see what happens so it looks like it does work or maybe I was just oops I took off more than a tip there <laughs> great um, so maybe I'm a little too anxious and it has been hot and I heard that beans you know they're not gonna flower if it's hot or they'll drop the flowers so here's a cherry tomato it's probably a black cherry because I love black cherry tomatoes you know I do a whole lot of cherry tomatoes because it doesn't take long for them to ripen so I got a lot of sets on here they're just not turning red but you know it is the end of June almost what is it June 26 and I guess getting a ripened tomato before the fourth is a good thing so I think I'm just rushing this um, rushing this uh, season along thinking it should be longer I mean should be ripening quicker but um, so I'm gonna pinch these two I mean it's not like it's got any room to go. <laughs> Just take the tips off and try that. Some of these are young. I like for them to grow up a little bit more before I pinch the, the tips off of them. And just wrap them around your your twine or your trellis. And they'll stay. So I got some collars here and a wicking system too. Some of them are yellowed out. So again, on the back side of this raspberry patch, it's just taken over. This was a whole bed. I used to put squash in here and tomatoes and peppers. Now it's just raspberries. I'll put some tomatoes on the ends here and have it going up my pole. Looks like I need to Help and string some of this up because it's grown. So yeah, this is my jungle. Some of these things are weeds I need to get out. This one has been putting on a lot of flowers, but it hasn't set. I think it's a mortgage lifter or a brandy wine. Today would be a good day for it to set since we have cooler weather. Oh, I have this trick. Let me go get it. It's the electric toothbrush. I don't know if I showed it on one of my other videos. I haven't had many, so. <laughs> but. Okay. So you take the electric toothbrush. This flower is probably wet. But you just take the electric toothbrush, cut it on, 
get it on this flower. And a little mimic like a bee. Vibrating in the flower. Flick them with your finger. That'll work. I don't know, I don't think these flowers are open enough. See how it got hurt. And it's just to knock that pollen so it can um, pollinate. So I have a eggplant. I don't know if y'all have this problem. Let me know in the comments. Is there something that you plant um, every year, like some plant that just will not grow? It like grew like gangbusters the year before, and you know you think it's gonna gonna grow just like it did last year. But you have poor results from it. So like this year is my eggplant. Um, I grew from seed like three eggplants. And one died. One's on its last leg. I pulled it up out of this pot. Bought one from Lowe's and put it in here. So that's what's growing in here. And another one I got on this back stoop that I haven't planted yet because I'm just waiting for it to like grow up a little. But I always have some type of vegetable that did good the previous year that won't <laughs> do good this year, you know, the next year. So I got a cucumber back here. He's, he'll get some sun. But then he's in the shade. And I believe it's a lemon cucumber. Because I love those things. Yeah, that looks like a lemon cucumber. Because they're small. And they're just so cute. So, we'll see. I don't see any squash bugs on this amazing my comfrey patch <laughs> so this is a container that I have banana leaves and I mean banana peels and um, weeds in it And it's a fertilizer. You've probably heard that banana leaves and banana peels give you fertilizer. So, if you put them in water. So, again, I used a pipe to divert the water to this other mulberry tree. And it grew probably a foot. During the winter, I'm going to try to, I'm going to put it back. I'm going to chop it back. I hear chopping them back is a good thing. So I also have either brandy wine or um, mortgage lifter. Those are the only big tomatoes that I'll usually grow. So we're going to try it again. Thank you. 
sopping wet. So you see there's blight. I guess you would call this early blight on them. These are too close together. So I'll just take off the leaves that have blight. Ooh, this one looks like it might have set. Yep. There's a little, little, little. Little tomato there. Yep. Let's see if he holds on. So, so I use like PVC pipes to string up my tomatoes. Also, I'll use whatever pole I can find. This was from a, one of those metal frame beds that my daughters had. I just pounded that in the ground and strung up the tomato on it. I try to recycle and reuse as much as I can. Here's a little squash plant that I got from, um, I think it was from Walmart. And they have these <laughs> tiny fruit on it. I don't know how big they're going to get. Let me see, here's the tag for it. Easy pick gold to squash. Better home and garden. When I two ninety six. I know you could buy a packet of packet of seeds for that price. But when I bought it, it had all these little small squash on it. And I was like, wow. Let me get so I have two plants. I have one here in the ground. I have another one in a pot. Okay, this is a type of, uh, like a black berry. It's German. It's blocking something. I gotta go back and look to see what the name of it is. Um, there are these berries that, from the Salation family, um, you know, the tomato family. But um, you can't eat these berries green if you do they'll make you sick I th they're poisonous you have to wait until they turn dark black before you can eat them and they're tasty but i haven't seen it i think i've had one i don't know again here's another plant that really ain't doing much but i mean it has a lot of bloom on it so i see on this mulberry bush I got some bad ones here. I'm 
re real simple to get those bag worms out. All you do is open it up <laughs> and let the birds eat it. And they'll have a tasty meal. And that's all you have to do. So I'm gonna open it up. Open it up. All the birds I got, they'll come and they'll come and eat this thing. So that's all you have to do with that. I could have just cut it off. <laughs> so that's a look at my garden. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for any new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, come on over and subscribe. Give me a like. And thanks again. Have a good day. Bye.